What's up, beautiful people? So today I have a video for you guys on um, kind of my little tips and tricks for how you can survive and hopefully take down the overlords, AKA the rogue mage. One word, rogue mage <laughs> in the arena, all right? So honestly, I really haven't faced a lot of rogue mage surprisingly in, in Shadowlands at all. So I kind of had to find finding trouble finding games to kind of help like, you know, give examples. I found two, not really the best examples where I'm gonna do everything I'm gonna mention, but I wanted just to give some sort of visual um, on what I'm doing. One was kind of a high, was a higher, a little bit higher rated game, and we kind of just literally shredded that team. And then the other one is a lower rated one that uh, I ended up getting a 1v2 on, which is pretty cool to see. Uh, <coughs> but nonetheless, so let me get these videos out here. So the first one here, this was kind of the higher rated game that we were playing. Um, and this one, so what I usually try to do in the opening of every single Rogue Mage video or game is obviously I'm, I'm going to be in stealth. And if I have a stealth teammate, like a Feral, um, a Rogue, a Mage, whatever it may be, um, I'm always going to try my best to have my teammate um, wait for the Mage to come out and then open immediately. If you get sapped as a Druid right now in this game, the game is over unless they severely mess up. So you gotta do whatever you can to not get sapped, okay? So like if you're playing with, like for example, with a rogue and you know they're, your rogue's trying to find that rogue the whole time, don't do that. Just have your rogue open on their rogue and just be ready to start playing. Because one sap ends the game, like almost every time. <laughs> so you gotta do whatever possible to not get sapped. And in trying to find, you know, um, uh, trying to wait for them to come out, I usually try to stay in range of my teammate but not too close because rogues are tend you know when the mage is about to come out rogues tend to try to you know open with a sap right so if he's gonna open with the sap that means he's in the perimeter he's somewhere around my teammate so i don't want to be too close because then they'll find me sap me gg you know um yeah so other than that they, they, they had this team kind of had a very interesting opener they didn't open with the sap immediately they let the mage come out first. Maybe it's because the rogue couldn't catch him. Sometimes, like, taking, like, weird pathways as your teammate could help out. Like, I think he was kind of zigzagging and figurating through all these bottom pillars. And we wanted to stay on the bottom because when I open up, I always want to be by a pillar. Um, if I'm in the open, I am vulnerable to everything. A blink DB ring, um, a step cheap shot one shot, you know, anything. So I kind of want to be by a pillar. Um, so this is a fire mage. So what they end up doing, they end up sapping my priest here. And then I know when they sap here, odds are they're gonna open with a G pie. Not always, but sometimes, but usually they're gonna open with a G pie. So this is kind of a sketchy positioning for me because running through here, he may have sat me. Luckily he didn't and I got through um, and I ended up stopping the G pie. So you have two options with the opening on the G pie. Either you open on it or sometimes when I play with my RK mage, he likes to trinket kick it. Um, which works fine with me too, because just our campaign is so tanky in general that we can kind of get away with that. Um, so, because you can always like block in the future if you know if it gets stuck. But in this case, I want to stop the G Pi, so I open, open with the G Pi, rake stun. Something I always tend to do, whether I'm opening on the rogue or the mage, is to vortex and get distance immediately, no matter what it is, um, because that'll stop two things it'll stop blink DB, it'll stop step cheat. All right, those are the two things that set up, you know, all the, you know, the crap that, you know, screws you over in, in the end, right? So what I always tend to do is try to blink, uh, or try to open, vortex, get distance, whether it's, you know, physical distance here or getting around a pillar, I ideally around a pillar. All right, so in this case, I didn't get able to, he cheap shot at him and got the blind on me. I know it's against what most you might see most people do, but I, you, my best tip is to do whatever you possibly can to not trick at the blind, whatever you possibly can, because, and usually when that means whatever you possibly can, it means you're, you have your partner use their defensives. Do not trink it. The longer you hold trink it, the longer, the better chance you have to win the game going forward. Um, you holding your trink it, will make them not blow their load on, on you, right? Or on one target. Because they always know that you have Trinket to, you know, counter it, right? Because if, for example, if I Trinket this blind, you know what's gonna happen? I am not on Sun BR right now. It's going to be a blink, it's gonna be a either a DB or whatever it may be. It might be a DB ring um, if they want to keep going my priest or it's a step kidney, GG, game over. Nothing I could do, right? That happens, I'm sure that happens to plenty of you guys. It's happened to me plenty of times. Um, so I gotta, you gotta do whatever you can to make sure you do not trick the blind. 
Um, also, another note, this usually when you when you do hold the blind, hold the trinket on the blind, the rogue will tend to kind of be floating because he knows he needs to get the sap off, right? Well, in this case, I am out of form, so they can poly. Ideally, I'm not a, ideally I'm in form for this, but usually, you know, um, the rogue's going to kind of be hovering to get the sheep off or the, 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 the sap, right? So that means he can't just all out my priest. He has to know he has to pull back a few seconds before. And again, that stops damage. It makes them kind of second guess what they're doing, right? They can't just all out blow their load and just GG, you know? So in this case, again, like I just said, my priest uses fade, really good use of the fade there. Again, I do not want to trinket no matter what, okay? Um, so I, I don't care if you use this fade, uh, disperse, everything. As long as I don't trinket, we have a much better chance of winning the game because he his defensives are so much better than mine. And he has swap. He has a lot of things to help me out. The second I trinket, I'm done, all right? So I hold this. So fortunately, like I just said there, which actually really was really clutch there, he didn't notice that that vortex was still there and he started casting poly and he got pulled back by it. Um... So he got pulled back, and when you vortex a shimmer cast, it stops the cast. Okay, um, so that's really good. Another good use of having that vortex there. Ideally, you want to catch both of them in that vortex. Okay, so because he had that gap in there, he didn't get the poly off, and then the rogue, the rogue. I'm sure. I'm just kind of assuming the rogue assumed he was going to get the poly, but he didn't. So now the rogue vanishes to try to get a sap on me, but there's a gap. My priest follows up with a silence and I'm able to sneak in overgrowth. And usually what I'm always gonna do when I have one second of gap is iron bark overgrowth every time, okay? So even though I got cheap, he was gonna try to sap me obviously, but he didn't get it off. I got an overgrowth iron bark, he's chilling, okay? That's always my first thing. Overgrowth iron bark's usually swift men if possible. And then even if I have another global, maybe even flourish it or shinari in it, okay? All right, so they do, looks like, Looks like he kind of messed up the, uh, oh, looks like my priest stunned him on the poly. Oh no, he stunned him. Why did he not get that poly? Hold on one sec. I think he just kind of stopped casting, to be honest. I think he just messed up. All right. So when it comes to after the opener, right? If I'm playing, um, depending on who I'm playing with, sometimes when I play like the lower games that I'm just playing no voice LFG with like viewers and whatnot, I try to do, try to get them to do whatever they can to get the rogues trinket. Usually, Rogue is going to be kill target. Rogues are very vulnerable in stuns, especially because I'm Night Fae and I can just convoke one shot them. You know, same stuff I used to do in BFA with Voodoo Dolls and whatnot. Rogues are always going to be the most vulnerable target. Mages are mad tanky right now for some reason. Between all, uh, you know, between Altar, uh, Spell Stealing, I mean, he's not Arcane, but Temp, Block, Caught, just so much. Rogue, he already trinketed. We can just global this, global this guy. Okay, in this case, I couldn't get him. Um, when it comes to after the opener, right, my positioning is crucial. I need to do whatever I can to not get caught in both of their lines, okay? So, um, what I'm gonna try and do here, I think I just try to make sure I keep him in combat, do whatever I can. I did Thorns here, because I knew he didn't have Cloak. Thorns is super good for getting Cloak or killing because he doesn't have Cloak, okay? And then after that, I wanna do whatever I can to kind of not be in line of both of them at the same time. When it comes to them killing you, always be prepared in the mindset that they're going to step kidney you and just kill you, right? Or blink, or they're gonna blink DB you uh, into ring or sheep and then kill your partner, okay? Um, so what I have to do, whatever I do, can just try to split these guys up, okay? So if I, if I do get stunned, I wanna get stunned out of line of the mage. I know rogues might seem scary, but they're not gonna, they're not gonna global you in a stun. It's the mage. It's the mage is gonna do the damage, right? One combust, pff, dead, right? And I'm pretty sure this guy hasn't combusted yet. He might have, I don't remember. Um, but anyway, it was kind of fortunate for us that he, so he he bailed on that, he evasioned himself. So I want to kind of split again. I'm not in line of both of them at the same time. You never want to be in line of both of them at the same time. All right, as this keeps going, I did notice that he evasion. He's got no trick and he's thinking about half health. He is my kill target, 100%. And I'm not gonna play super defensive on this. I want to kick this guy's butt because you gotta, but if you let them, you know, full reset, he gets a re-stealth, he heals up, GG, you know? Um, and this, that's another another point of that is make sure you always have blaze on this guy um, because they have, um, you know, they may cloak, they may vanish. Try to keep, especially rip. Rip is a much longer bleed than rake. If it ever possible get a rip up, definitely do so okay so i'm in my head i'm just kiting this guy i'm I, and whenever i'm out of line of a mage whether they're going me or not i if, if i can't see the mage on my my screen physically 
I'm going to always be watching my Gladius because uh, I can see a poly here. That's how I how I personally play, um, you know, to get to shift polys and whatnot. Is that I'm usually just looking straight up at them, but if I can't look at them and I need to face a different way for whatever reason, I'm watching my Gladius to see if he casts poly. I do not want to get caught in a poly. Game over if, if we get the poly, right? Okay, so I'm just pre-hotting at this point. I end up scenarioing and flourishing it because I know I'm gonna fall off Stun DR in just a second here, and they're probably gonna either try to CC me or probably most likely kill me because my pre has dispersion swap. All right, so this is his priest's altar there. The rogue ends, ends up getting uh, getting out of combat for some reason. That was kind of on me. I didn't let I didn't let him get away, but I did bleed him up. So that's uh, you know he might he should come back out. Okay, he opens me. So this is the case here. You gotta be you gotta be observant when to use your trinket here. So are they going me or are they going my teammate? Okay, because I, I see that they're going me, and this is just the, a slim scenario. Ideally, you know, if this rogue isn't vulnerable to dying, like he has cloak, he has trinket or something like that, I'm gonna sit this. Again, always try to let your you let your partner use defensives first. You know, whether you have to communicate it or whatever. Um, but in this case, I did notice that he did not have neither of these guys had trinket. So I ended up trinketing the stun and then um, just to get out of the ring. And then I just start smoking the, the rogue. So I ended up meld stunning and then I convoke him behind the corner. Um, the rogue kind of, the mage kind of panicked and went for a poly instead of, uh, uh, instead of kicking my convoke, but we ended up just copping a quick kill there. That guy actually, wow, we actually, got, that was actually a huge convoke. Another reason why I love convoke so much. Take down those, take down those guys 1v1, man. Let me go back, let me say it one more time. Yeah, I actually got like fat crits on that. <laughs> I got two ginormous crits. Uh, but then, and that was the game on that. Okay, and then the other game I want to show you guys is... Okay, this game here. All right, so this was a bit of a lower game. Um, my This was a viewer of mine. Um, so it, the game wasn't going to be perfect. Um, and I knew, it, he knew, I knew he was going to be kind of, you know, hesitant and want to use cooldowns. Because not a lot of people know that you just gotta use everything, man. This is Shadowlands, this ain't BFA. You gotta use your defensives, no matter what it is. And always try to have your partner use the defensives before you do. Because the second you trink it and you have to use your stuff, you're dead. All right? Okay, so the hunter, again, like I said, try to have, once the mage pops out of stealth, have your teammate open on the mage, okay? Um, just so I don't get sapped, all right? If I get sapped, game over. All right, so they pop everything, the combust bomb. This is ideally what happens. So in a perfect world, he's gonna trinket turtle or something. Trinket uh, exhilaration, trinket. Honestly, if I was on hunter, what I would probably do would be trinket turtle and then trap something just to try to force out a trinket. Um, when I'm playing with a hunter against rogue mates, I try. I, I was trying to tell him to just you know trap early because if you can get somebody's trinket, especially the rogue, I can kill him on that. So they end up blowing everything. I, 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 what I wanted to try to do, like he triggered it very late there. I was trying to, you know, stun one and then iron bark over God Swiftman out. Okay, didn't get it unfortunately. So when it comes to the again, I open up. I try to vortex so they can't step me. When it comes to one v twoing, what you got to do? Rogue's always the kill target. I mean, this is for you guys who want to try to, you know, get after it and try to win those one v twos. Most people just quit after that, but we don't quit. Um, if you're trying to 1v2, again, line the mage, dot the rogue. That's always going to be the idea. If they're running, that's the plan. If, the, if they're on you, make the rogue line the, line the mage, okay? You do not want to get stunned in line of the mage, otherwise you're dead. Okay, so I end up just kind of dotting them. I know I know they're going to try to kill me here, so i got to pre-hop myself. I have, I'm not on stun DR, but I do have trinket. All right, so I think I end up ironbrook overgrowth thing here. Or I overgrowth and bark skin. Hotted myself up, went bear form. Unfortunately, he did klepto me. Because he klepto me, I had to trinket it. Um, and then I used Scenarian. I think I'm gonna end up flourishing it in a second. But this was good. So, always take advantage of the, them kleptoing, right? Because of thorns. So because he kleptoed, I was able to, I, I Scenarian, he can't capture Scenarian. I can flourish it and I can thorns, most importantly. This guy has no cloak. The thorns can take him down easily. So he ends up, he ends up pumping himself really hard with that. I pop Heart of the Wild, I get a re-stealth, I dot him up, and now I'm running. Those are Heart of the Wild uh, bleeds. I know that they're very strong. See, and then this again, whatever, I, what I said to do again, try to make the rogue line the mage. May take the mage out of the game by, by, the, by the rogue just training you. 
All right, so I ended up doing this. This guy was kind of silly and followed me. He really should have ran away um, and just got a reset and just reset and one shot me because I had no trinket at this point. Uh, but he ends up playing in on me um, and I get all my dots up. I end up dotting him even more. And because he was ranged, I did not want to push in. He, this guy has DB. He could DB ring me into, you know, one shot. Um, so I ended up just Moonfire, Sunfire, and hope that he kills him. I knew he didn't have Cloak, so I kind of didn't end up chasing him. If I if he had Cloak, I would have had to try to chase him. Otherwise, the game was over. All right, so he does get the DB on me, and he gets the ring. But fortunately, um, wait, how did he miss that? Hold up. <laughs> did he miss that ring? Or did I... Oh yeah, he, was, he just missed the ring. He was a little slow on that. Must have low haste. But the rogue fortunately dies, and it just becomes a 1v1 from that. This is a bit of a longer 1v1, um, so I'll just kind of talk through it. I'm not going to pause it anymore. Um, Mage just kind of waits too long to cast. I get a reset on that. <laughs> kind of trolling. Um, but when it comes to 1v1, and this is just kind of a good general 1v1 strat, it's all about hitting and running. Last well, the stun DR, hit, rake, rip, moonfire, sunfire as you're running away. Okay, that's just going to be the general 1v1 strat versus any class. The only one, the only class that would be different is rogues. Rogues, you have to make sure you get the bleeds on, um, and you cannot let them restealth. If you if they get a full restealth, I mean, they can restealth with bleeds on it, and you know you kind of pop back out. But if they get a full on restealth, they should never lose the game. All right, they just kind of play you with an openers with like stun, triple stuns into blind, and then run away. You know. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to just constantly just restealth. Do what we got to do. Vortex you to get away. Kite him out. Get a restealth. Kind of, you know, nothing dangerous here. When it comes to 1v1ing Fire Mages specifically, as long as you don't blow your trinket, you should never lose, okay? The only way they win is the... <laughs> I learned this com combo from uh, from BFA. It's DB ring, g Pi combust. That's game. Nothing you can do. You lose, Okay. Um, so on, so fortunately, this is actually kind of a fuck up on my part, um, because I ended up, uh, go playing in on that without trinket. If he got that DB ring, I might've died. So that's actually, actually my, uh, on me. So I, you really don't want to play the game until you get trinket up or unless you have, if you have it up, you can kind of play a little more aggressive with it. Constantly getting restelts, you know, dotting him and running. This mage healed like a madman. I'm going to skip a little bit through this. He was just healing so much. Um, between kleptos and drinks and whatnot because I just want to play it safe. I mean, I have trinket, but um, I end up just kind of running away And I think he still keeps going here <laughs> Gets another drink, but you know in a 1v1 scenario don't rush it. Don't play over aggressive. Just hit and run hit and run, okay? He gets a DB on me. I'm not worried just because I have trinket. He should have rung that um but he didn't. The at least kind of getting a little scared here. But he did should DB ring ring that. If he did, I just would have trinketed it. Um, and then I again, well actually I wouldn't have trinketed it unless he combusted. I only you only want to trinket versus combust because that's where you die. You can save yourself versus other stuff like that. Um, I ended up popping us my second heart of the while. That's how long this game was. All right, and then I'll just kind of skip through. He alters. <laughs> he didn't cancel his alter here. He came back. Damn, man. This guy was just trying his heart out. Uh, he, ends up, he ends up just dying of dots here, I believe. But yeah. So that's it. Um, yeah, like I said, about a rogue mage. If any of you guys have any other questions about anything different, specific, I hope I covered everything. I probably missed one or two things, but feel free to comment below if you, you know, you you have anything you know I didn't talk about and maybe I can give you some insight on. It's not going to be perfect. Um, you might still lose games. It is what it is, man. It's rogue mage. But hopefully some of these tips will help you out and getting more dubs versus them. Um, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you like it. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, tell a friend. Maybe, maybe not. I don't care. Hopefully you have a great day and hope we see you on the stream. Peace.